Welcome to Bonehead Guitars. Since GGBO 22 is winding down, um, we just got into the voting sta stage and probably like a weekend, so we got like three more weeks. Mm, it's been a little more than that. Okay, um, I wanted to, I promised to last year and I didn't get around to it. And after the fact, it, it was, uh, it just didn't seem quite as right anyway. Uh, however, at this stage, before, you know, winners have been announced or anything, I think it's a good time to, to do this. Um, I want to show you how I've been trying to evaluate and how how to evaluate all the bills and how to decide what, you know who to vote for. Um, there are a number that I really want to vote for. So um, I, I did want to highlight a few of my absolute favorites. Um, I've watched everything. Now some of the long videos I, I skimmed through some. You know I skipped a little bit, but but I sat. I started and went through every video. Uh, so I've already seen most of the stuff. I mean, there was a flurry of uh, final videos that all came down uh, at once, which was a crazy two or three days. But I watched all of those too. Okay, the 45 minutes I skimmed a little bit. But I watched everything. Um, so I want to show you how I decided to try to evaluate this. I don't necessarily suggest this for anybody else. It's, um, I'm not even entirely sure what I think of it yet, but, um, but it's given me answers that are pretty close to what I thought anyway. Uh, but I wanted to highlight some of my favorites, and the problem with this, the thing I don't like, is in highlighting some, I'm not highlighting some others, and I hate to do that. But there were just a few that really jumped out at me. And to be quite honest, uh, at least in uh, kit and scratch builds, my absolute favorites, I don't think were the absolute best builds. I don't think they're the ones that should win, necessarily. But, whatever. So, I mean, point being, it, it comes down to taste. And it, there were certain things that just jumped out at me and I was super impressed with. Um, everybody did some awesome stuff, and it was fun watching everybody do their stuff, so if I don't mention you, please don't take it to mean anything. What I decided to do for trying to evaluate, uh, there's another column over here that, um, has everybody's name, and I'm not going to show you that. I just set up a, a set of categories, uh, creativity, originality, aesthetics, video quality, craftsmanship, complexity of the build, uh, the character of the, the builder, uh, the function. I didn't want to get in too much into, uh, you know, telling you what I considered each of those columns, but function included uh, the demo, how well I could, you know, could tell it was or wasn't set up, um, some things like that. Um, there were a couple other things that factored in there that elude me at the moment, but so from one to ten, I evaluated each of those on each build, and then I wound up setting a a weight to each of those categories. So aesthetics is a big one. Craftsmanship is the biggest to me. Uh, the complexity of the build and the functionality, you know, are, are important. Okay, so. And then I, I just summed all of those together uh, to see what that would do. Um, well, initially I'd summed that before I put the weights. Once I added the weights, then I just multiply the score there by the weight and then add all of that together just to come up with a, with a final score. And largely it kind of worked out the way I expected. There were a few surprises, honestly. Um, and I don't want to get into a big argument about what the, the columns mean and whether or not they should be there or not. I'm not even entirely sure I'm sold. It was just, it was an idea of a way to try to 
objectively go through everything and, you know, evaluate each build based on the same criteria. That's all. So, take it as you will. Um, but, I mean, like I said, it produced some results that were in some cases a little surprising, but largely how I expected them to go. Okay. I feel really bad about highlighting some people and not others. There's something about that that, that doesn't quite feel right to me, but... At the same time, I feel some of them, you know, deserve some recognition. And I, I think most of you would agree with me on a lot of these choices. A lot of them. Maybe not all of them. Hopefully not all of them, because if we all agreed, that would be kind of boring. But, but again, just please, nobody take this the wrong way. I just, okay. Okay, on the freestyle side, let me first say, <laughs> Mark Gutierrez, um, it looks like, I, I may be wrong, but it looks like he actually just entered that one project in the freestyle and the scratch. In which case, personally, I don't think he should win both, but... In all honesty, uh, I think that was the most impressive, uh, crazy, interesting, awesome build for a lot of reasons. I don't know 100% that that's the one I'm going to vote for. I, I, I haven't decided who I'm voting for just yet. These are, these are my tops, okay? Um... But I, I had to point him out just because, it, unless I'm wrong, I think he's actually entered this one project in, in both categories, freestyle and scratch. So right now, I'm just we'll we'll deal with him on the scratch side. I'm not counting him on freestyle at the moment. There were a few that jumped out at me. Now, number one, um, I have to say. Um, Chris Garland and uh, Gabrielle Reddy. Uh, they were extremely impressive to watch last year, and it was it was sad to see them not get recognition. You know when uh, Scratch was just Scratch, and everybody was included in that. And it was acoustic is a totally different animal. There's so many things that are different about it, but they are so much more precise and so much more um, uh, luthiers, I think, than us mere electric uh, builders. Not to step on anybody's toes there either, but they both were very impressive, and watching them work has been exceptionally impressive. And um, regardless of how things go, I personally think both of them deserve a lot of recognition for what they've done. Um, they've been very entertaining to watch, uh, very interesting to watch, and did phenomenal jobs. Um, they were fairly uh, traditional, which kind of makes you not stand out quite as much in this type of situation, and... And I, I'm, I'm guilty of that, too, because the ones that I really want to highlight, besides Chris and Gabrielle, who make beautiful instruments, uh, the marquetry on hers was exceptional. Um, Stormbound. Stormbound. <laughs> I mean... I mean, that's, to me, that's, that's what freestyle's all about. That's crazy. And the music that he makes with it is also crazy. It's just incredible. 
And personally, for me... Uh, you know what, travel guitar. Um, Buyer Works... It's just... It, it's a very, very, very beautiful build. Uh, the ash that's been, you know, painted white, um, or cream. Uh, the stain on the top, the F-holes, the, the bridge that protrudes through the top, um... This was a red... I, this build really stood out to me. But weirdly enough, there didn't seem... I'm, I'm hoping... I, it's one of the reasons I'm waiting until the last minute to vote, because I want to see if, if some other people come through, because... Um, it doesn't look like there are as many final videos as there should be. So, I'm holding out until the end to see who else comes through. On the kit side... Um... There were three that really jumped out at me. Um, I wish YouTube hadn't done this. SL Guitars. I'm sorry, SL Guitar. <laughs> uh, the carving of the snake in the telly is exceptionally well done. Um, and you have to marvel at that. Uh, especially the rocks and just the relief of all of it. It's exceptional work. And, and very eye-catching. Um, <laughs> boutique builds, uh, this was this was ingenious. There were two builds this year that actually had liquid in the body, and this was one of them, the aquarium, which is just... <laughs> it's, it's extremely creative. Um, this one was fun. I'm not sure what you're going to think of it. Uh, I don't know if it would have stood out to you or not. Uh, guitar mongers, uh, it's fairly traditional, but uh, it was enough of a change to the body shape to be, you know, um, unique, but not, you know, a lot of, a lot of bodies are unique for the sake of being unique, and it doesn't work, and this does work, uh, but the white to purple fade was just, it just jumped out at me, it really was a gorgeous project to me, um, this was one of my favorites in kit. I mean, look at it. <laughs> when it comes to scratch, there were a few that were exceptional. And there were a lot that were almost as exceptional. They're just not getting listed here. Um, Cheshire Grin guitars, uh, the Angel Tear, I think you called it was a pretty unique and awesome build. Uh, the other one that had a liquid in the body. Um, it's crazy. Crazy. Really uh, creative and unique. Um, of course, whatever the hell his name is, um, the um, watch-inspired guitar build. Incredibly creative. Um, the custom knobs, uh, there are a lot of things on this that are, that are really exceptionally well done. Um, very unique and creative, uh, you know, hollow headstock, all of that. Awesome. Uh, this one, honestly, uh, I mean, watching the build, it was interesting in how he managed to, to do... Uh, his knob that actually protrudes through the body and 3D printed some gears and craziness to, to facilitate that. Um, at first glance, it's not a really eye-catching build, but it is extremely interesting in how he put it together and how he did some of these things. But um, if there is a spot prize for the best sound demo this dude better get it. Exceptional. Exceptional. Ranmok, uh, Ranmok's project was absolutely gorgeous. Very, uh, subtle in, in the classiness of it, but, um, really beautiful build. Now we're getting into ones that really kind of are my favorite favorites and 
uh, this Infinity thing that JR's uh, GGBO Adventure made is freaking awesome. Um, the concept's cool, but the way it was done is just absolutely gorgeous. I love this project. Absolutely awesome. <sighs> then, I gotta say, this project by Carez is honestly my favorite in Scratch this year. Um, I don't know yet. This is my favorite. This absolutely is my favorite. Um, the crazy color top was awesome, but the, uh, the hardware really worked perfectly well with it. I'm betting that he wondered how it was going to go, and it just, you know, was uh, super surprised and pleasantly surprised at how well it did work out. Uh, but then, uh, cerusing the, uh, the black painted ash on the back in multicolors was just, <laughs> look at it. This is my favorite build this year, I, I, I have to say. I don't know if it's going to get my number one vote or not, but there's a really good chance. And then, of course, Mark Gutierrez. <laughs> Watching the build process on this was a, a very, very interesting. I'm, I've never been a huge fan of CNC stuff, but regardless, um, the design and, and having to try to curve these frets and um, uh, CNC the, uh, the nut and the... Um, string retainer on the back of the headstock. Um, other Dude's sound demo was, to me, hands down, the best in, in three years. However, Mark's is a very close second. Um, this was just... Everything about this is exceptional. It's just awesome. Uh, his uh, tips and tricks... Tips. Uh, early on for uh, camera work and some of those and lighting and some of those things was interesting. Um, he did an exceptional job in um, videography, uh, recording, uh, the demo, uh, presentation, everything about this this series uh, for this build was absolutely top notch. I'm gonna feel dirty if I don't vote for him. Except that I, I take solace in the fact that uh, many, many, many others will. <laughs> so <laughs> if my vote doesn't go to Mark, just I, I hope Mark understands um, it was very hard not to. I'm, <laughs> I'm still, I'm not saying who I'm voting for because I'm not, I don't know yet in any category. I'm still... It's still up in the air. All right, well then, I have a couple friends from uh, Guitar Builders Collective that I have to highlight. Uh, there were, oh, what was his name? Uh, Chris Harvey? Dang it, was it Chris Harvey? Uh, uh, older British gentleman who had a stroke during competition and wasn't able to finish his build. Um, uh, I felt a need to mention him. Um, uh, Corey uh, with Saul Good uh, Guitars uh, has been dealing with some medical issues over the last year as well and uh, there was a time when they didn't know if he was going to be able to you know, spend enough time on, on his projects to do what he had to do and he's He's a madman. Uh, he, he pumps out a lot of projects just to stay in the shop. Um, he did a really awesome build. I feel, you know, I have to, I have to point to his wingy topped monster. It was a good build. And then uh, another buddy from the group is Lucifer, uh, Brett. Um, really. I, 
top-notch character, very fun, entertaining, interesting videos to watch, and he did some really good inlay work and binding work that uh, kind of kept us on the edge of our seats for a little while, um, and everything turned out pretty awesome. So I had to point out those guys. Um, I Maybe later I will go through and... and comment some on the community build. For the time being, I, I was just leaving them off because it's just... They're not in the competition. So, I mean... It just... Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. Um, that... That's... That's, that's kind of my take on the competition on the way it's been so far. Um been a great group of people this time. Uh, there have been some names that we've missed that I kind of wish were around this time. It's, but, um, you know, other people got other things to do. Uh, we got some new faces this year. Uh, there were a lot of interesting things, some great ideas. Um, I have noticed each year there's there's there will be a, a trend of things that just spontaneously come you know, out of multiple people at the same time. And this was the year of, you know, headstock embellishments and, and things like that. It's just kind of interesting. But it's great to see new faces in the competition and uh, new ideas and some awesome stuff. And uh, I just... For everybody who's who got involved this year, uh, thank you very much for, for your contributions and, um, you know, for playing a part. Um, for watching their stuff and commenting, and uh, thanks to Crimson, of course, for running things. Um, it's been a crazy couple of years, and uh, you know, I hope everybody's healthy and doing well. And I hope everybody is com uh, happy and comfortable with the way voting happens this time. I think this will be the way to go, and I think. Doing it this way, uh, at the end, virtually none of us will be able to say that that was just messed up. You know, even if it's something we can't agree totally with, we'll be able to say, "Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense." And I think that will be much more encouraging to people. And uh, again, so many people that did, you know a first build or one of their early builds and to jump into the competition to do that is absolutely awesome uh, that's always fun to see but um, good luck to everybody um, I'm anxious to see how the votes shake out uh, uh, which of my favorites win it's it's gonna be fun so anyway thanks for playing your part thanks for watching Peace.